Welcome to the Parent Line Podcast, where we discuss the joys and challenges of modern parenting and explore how we as parents can give our children the best start in life. Hello and welcome to the latest edition of Parent Line podcast and today it's all about the pitfalls of modern fatherhood and I'm absolutely delighted to welcome Alex Kane into the studio. Hello, Hello Alex. Nice to be here, thank you. Thank you. Um, could you maybe tell our listeners and viewers a little bit about yourself? Well I'm, I'm Alex Kane, I'm a, I'm a political commentator and columnist in Northern Ireland working across a, a range of platforms and trying to make sense of what's happening in, in, in Northern Ireland politics. And as my mum always used to say, if, if it ever made sense, I would never have a job. <laughs> so I expect to be in a job for a long, long time yeah, to come. Yeah, I think you will. I think you will. Um, so to, today it's all about the pitfalls of modern fatherhood. And I guess from, you know, looking at the media and in terms of um, posters that you see and um, movies and things like that, we're often shown images of fatherhood that al- always sort of says that, you know, uh, oh, fathers, don't don't be doing this. It's the mother that should be in this role. Do you think those gender stereotypes are helpful for fathers today? No, they're not helpful, but they're, they're still everywhere you go. Um, I'm an older dad and being a freelance means I most of my work is from home. And I have the, the, the luxury, and it is, I, I look upon it as a luxury and mm-hmm. the privilege of being able to take my children to school. And uh, so I take Lila, who's my, my middle one, who's 10, mm-hmm. and their school's a few hundred yards away from where we live. I take her there every mm-hmm. day, usually pick her up if I can. Mm-hmm. But it's still 95 percent of the of the people who are there who are women. Mm-hmm. And, I, I, and I get I, I, people who don't know me who meet me for the first time you know, will sort of say, oh, um, does your wife work? Are you, are you a stay at home yeah. dad? Or, um, oh, could, could your wife not get in today? And, and the odd way they do it, and they make it sound almost like it's a criticism yeah. of, mm-hmm. of, of her. You uh-huh. know, and then after a while they get to know you, and then they go, "Oh, um, I wish my I wish my husband or my partner would 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 come in with the kids, but he doesn't want to." And I'll say, well, "Why don't you encourage him?" Oh, well, I, I don't know. Is is it his place? So there is still this sense, I think, um, and it's not a criticism of women, by the way. Yeah. That, but there's still this sense that somehow, uh-huh. it's the it, it's the mother's responsibility to take yeah, the kids. I'm, I have to say that. You know, even though I've worked in the women's sector, in the children's sector, I think sometimes I think like that as well, because sometimes if I see a father, um, you know, taking the pram, I I think, oh, I wonder where the mother is. So I guess we all have a responsibility to to change how we view fatherhood. Well, I always say to to, to dads, because sometimes an odd thing, you know, guys will say to me, oh, my God, what do you have to take them every day? Is that not <laughs> awful? I said, no, because it's actually that sense. In that anyone who's ever picked, particularly picking up a child, yeah. anyone who's ever picked up a child within the, the, that few seconds of them setting foot on the playground yeah. and coming towards you, you get the full download. You get every single thing that's happened that day. By the time they get home, the mom arrives at someone else. So how was your day at school? Nothing. Oh my because goodness. they don't they, they think they've already and I love I love getting that and uh-huh. it is a wonderful bond it's it's at that sense of, plus you get to know your your, your children's friends because mm-hmm. that's another thing a lot of dads don't people always say about you know what what you miss it's not only taking your children to school you miss the other parents yeah. you miss the friends that those children have I know all of Lila's friends I get on very well I know their parents we can talk mm-hmm. and we can share things together and I just think it's it, it's it's almost, it's not sadness, that's maybe over egging it, but mm-hmm. I, I think a lot of dads, if they if they were given a week and told, this is just, the, the, the state now allows you to have a week of yes. taking your child to school and picking them up just yeah. to see what happens. I think an awful lot of them might suddenly realise, I have missed yeah. so much. And I would not, people say, you know, doesn't it really, you don't get bored doing it. I never, it doesn't matter what the weather is like, that, that, that leaving her off, that little hug and kiss you get, the picking mm-hmm. them up. That is so important. And it's part of a bonding process, yeah. which once you've established as a dad, you'll never lose it. And too many dads who, who could see the relationship uh-huh. I have had with my kids. Yeah. I think some of them realise what they've missed out on. Mm-hmm. And do you think um, employers then could do uh, something to help fathers um you know, take their children to school or, or have that bonding process? I think that I think we need to find a way of ensuring that the parents do share. I mean, and not in a sort of you must you must take your child to school. You must yeah. enjoy his or her company. Mm-hmm. But I think dads should be given the opportunity because I, I know I mean, I'm, I know I'm an older dad, but I also know 
time goes enormously quickly. Suddenly that, yeah. that little girl, that little boy you were kissing goodbye to when you were, you know, they're still in bed and you're going to work. Yes. They're suddenly 18 years old. They're I heading know. out to university. They're building their own families. And the number of dads I've met over the years who say to me, I didn't really know that about him or her, simply because they'd never built up that bond. Yeah. And the other thing about building up the bond, your kids will come and talk to you. Yeah. Because they, they're not embarrassed because they will mm -hmm. know you know their friends. So if Lila comes up to me and says, oh, guess what Lily did today? I know in my head exactly who Lily is. Yes. I know exactly what she's likely to have done. Yeah. So I'm prepared to. Whereas for most dads, it's oh, who's she? What's she like? What's she do? And that again, I think bonding with all children is about yeah. they know you and they trust you enough to talk to you. And people think that's a tripe thing to say, mm -hmm. almost a stupid thing. But it's really important. That yeah. your children from the very earliest age possible trust you enough to talk to you about mm -hmm. everything. Um, you were talking there about being an older dad and in Northern Ireland we love putting people in boxes um, whether you're Protestant, Catholic, other or Brexiteer, Remainer um, if we ever get Brexit done or whatever. Um, so how, how do you feel about being put into that box of being an older dad and how does it uh, impact on your parenting style? Well, I, I suppose part of me is an older dad because I never really thought I would be a good dad. It, okay. it, it, it's an odd thing. When I was a young man, I, I, I didn't really have the, I thought I didn't have the time. I wasn't willing to make that commitment. Mm -hmm. you know? And I think that may be just a, it's a work career thing. And yeah. it, may have, it may affect a lot of people. Um, and also, I suppose um, it, it goes back to my adoption. Um, yeah. uh, I, I, I had difficulties in, in that sense of thinking, you know, could I, could I be there for... Okay. for children in the way I needed to be there for children. Yeah. And I'd almost written off the idea of having children. I'd got to around 45 mm -hmm. and, you know, I was happy in my own little place, doing my own thing, sitting in my study, reading mm -hmm. Sherlock Holmes, having a few <laughs> sherries, tripping over a cat. Yes. That was my life. Yeah. And then and not noticing, really, I had friends who had children. I have a couple of godchildren along mm -hmm. the way, but not ever feeling that sense of loneliness. And then I just met. I met my partner, Kerry. Mm -hmm. Um, not over 20 years ago and suddenly it's only when you meet that one person yes. that you realise how lonely you've been for the rest of your life yeah. and I also knew then that A I would like children because I would like children if, if, if I was going to be a dad I, I would like her to be the, the mom of, yeah. of the children uh -huh. and it was so it didn't matter the age thing people always say about the age thing it doesn't matter once you have made that connection and that bond none mm -hmm. of that matters and yeah for a while you think sometimes okay I'm a much older dad and you had this when you first taking your children to school. People go, mm -hmm. oh, they think it's your, oh, your granddad's here to pick you up. Mm -hmm. And they would go, that is my father. That is my daddy. And you fairly, mm -hmm. and also I have a slight advantage. And a lot of people would know who I am. Yes. And I've talked about this so they, they, they know that. But um, I, I, I think being an older dad, experience is important. And it applies to mums as well. Mm -hmm. The experience of, uh, of knowing what your children need, what your children want, um, how to best be there for them and so mm -hmm. on. And I, I think... In terms of being a dad, I like to think I'm a good dad, mm -hmm. but I think I'm a much better dad than I would have been okay. because I, I'm an older dad, because yes. I have so much experience. And the other thing is, and again, this is, it, it's part of the adoption thing. Mm -hmm. I learned when I was adopted to six that you, it, it, you need love, you need comfort, you need security, you need confidence. Mm -hmm. So when I look at my own children, it doesn't matter how well they've been brought up, the fact that they've never been, been through the adoption system, mm -hmm. that they've got stability in their lives. I always know that those are the four factors that apply most in life. It isn't, you know, giving them the latest iPod. Yeah. It isn't about giving them the fanciest clothes. Uh -huh. it's, I like to think no matter what happens, yeah. the two older, Meg is 21, Lila's 10, and these mm -hmm. two, he hasn't got that stage yet. Yes. But when they look back, they'll go, Dad was always there. It may not have given us all these things that they're supposed to be. And yeah. I see kids. I see kids in playgrounds yeah. with, with, with their mobiles and things like that. You yeah. know? And I sometimes joke with Lila about it. Yes. But I know Lila would not swap the, 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 the nonsense on the sofa and chatting and telling bad yeah. jokes with each other for here, have, have this phone, have this mobile. And I think yeah. that, so all of that, you know, and I would not, it wouldn't have worked with me personally yeah. when I was a young man. But I just yeah. think, again, for a lot of dads, it's not about buying them. It's not about buying their love or buying their, yeah. their silence or buying their cooperation. It's about just making them feel I am wanted, I am loved, I am needed, I'm part of this family. If you yeah. can do that, everything else will work out. Yeah, that is so lovely. Um, you touched a bit about um, you know being adopted and being in care. How has that impacted on, on you as a father uh, to your children? Well, it sometimes makes you think about why 
you ended up because I can think of no circumstance, no circumstance imaginable in which I would allow any of my children to be taken from me. Yes. So it's in the back of my mind is why did that happen? And mm-hmm. that's a journey I'm on. I've, yes. I've done one part of that journey. I've been back to the, the orphanage I was in yeah. to look at it. I, I've, I've been to the school I was at, you know, I've no memories of, it, but I've been there. I've tried mm-hmm. to. And I may go to the next stage and find out you know, exactly what happened mm-hmm. to my to my birth parents and, 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 and why. Mm-hmm. I wasn't there, but um, I think it's that, knowing that background, it just feeds into what I said earlier, it feeds into the sense of realizing what is important mm-hmm. for children, because people, I, I think people have this sense, children are not intelligent or, or ruthlessly manipulative in that sense when they're young. Mm-hmm. Basically, they, they like certainty. Yes. They like security. They like routine. Mm-hmm. And again, I think both the mom and dad need to play that. And also, I think that's why I don't like this idea that there are specific roles for moms and specific roles for dads. I think that's bad because once you feed that into a child's mind, you're not feeding it until they're 10 or 15 or 20. You're feeding it right the way through mm. to the next generation. And it does. In some senses, it it annoys me in many cases that... Um, it's going back to your original question about, you know, the state and so on. We mm-hmm. need, it's all very well to say, oh, your dad should get paternity leave. A month's paternity leave will help the mother more than it'll help the children. Yeah. But this notion that suddenly in that month you'll be able to bond with a child, the bonding process, it takes five, six years till they're talking and fully yeah. appreciate things. All of somehow as a society, we have to find a way of making sure that you can continue to play, you know, a part in your children's lives. And I, yeah. I, I, I just, I, it's just, it's personally, I can't imagine now. I'm lucky and I, and I accept the fact that yeah. I'm lucky being freelance. I, I have a job that allows me to make and take that time. But I've also deliberately chosen mm-hmm. to take and make it because when I, I was working and we'd had four miscarriages in a row mm-hmm. and thought we might never. And I remember sort of half jokingly thinking to myself, well, do you know, if we get the one out safely, yes. I'm going to I'm going to spend time because I watch, I'd, you know, I'd watch Meg grow up and suddenly realize yeah. I'd, I was spending so much time working. Uh-huh. I didn't know this child. Mm-hmm. I thought that's never going to happen again. So within I think it was four months after Lila was born, I gave up. What was actually quite a well-paid job. I mm-hmm. just thought, no, I actually want to spend time. Also because I'm older, that's the other thing as yeah. well. But all those feeding in. But I get it all for me, it all boils down to the time they have with me, whether it's 20 years, 10 years, whatever it is, I want them to look back and just go, every memory is, wow. Do you remember yeah. when, wow. You know, the laugh, the, you know, the fun, the sense of, you know, oh God, I remember dad, I was the, f- the first time I told them this. Yeah. You know, all of that is uh-huh. important to me. And I, I accept uh, for some parents, it's difficult, but I think there are sometimes parents who have children without thinking it through. That it, yeah. it, it isn't, it is, it, it's right to say like a dog isn't just for Christmas. Children yeah. are just for, oh, we've, we've got the two children now. Yeah. We've got the mortgage. We've got the, the two holidays a year. Let's move yeah. on. Children are there. And can I ask you, how do how did other people perceive you when you decided to give up a well-paid job to go freelance so that you could spend more time with your children? Well, only very few knew because, well, now more will know because yes, I'm, I'm telling yes. you. <laughs> but um, I think it was just a sense because I wanted to, if, if, part of that thing, when you've been through four miscarriages and we saw the, the heart beat in all four of them, mm-hmm. you know, because when you lose a, mis- you know, the, a, a child, then, yeah. you know, we asked and said, look, is there a way if you have more? You can check if you get your scans early. So we yeah. saw the heart beating and so on. So it, it, it's that sense of knowing, you know, you know, the loss. People just yeah. say, oh, it's for six months or six weeks. What is it? A bunch mm-hmm. of, it isn't, you know, once, yeah. once you see that heartbeat, once you hear that heartbeat, that's a real living, breathing mm-hmm. entity. And the loss is, it's almost crucifyingly painful. It, mm-hmm. it is just... It's almost a wickedness in the in, in the pain mm-hmm. associated with miscarriage, and yeah. so, so you know you're losing something. So again, part of that fed into this, that if a child, if a real living, breathing child yeah. appears, it's getting my time. It's getting our time. Kerry is freelance as well. Mm-hmm. It, it'll get time. But some people sort of think, oh, you'll do." I did tell one person who said, "It'll pull you back in, Alex. You're a political animal. Yes. It'll pull you back in." I remember one very well-known journalist just saying to me, "Alex, I'll give it." I'll give it exactly six months, Alex, before you'll be back up here because you'll you'll miss the chit chat. Uh-huh. I said, you know, I think I won't. And it's because uh, it's just, uh, maybe it's just one of those things, again, because I can write and talk. Mm-hmm. I was able to do a lot of that from mm-hmm. home. Yeah. But I think I would have still yeah. I would have still taken that option. You know, it, it yeah. meant taking a financial hit. 
Yeah. Um, okay. But I, I think it was worth taking that financial hit because of the the other joys, and you cannot yeah. you cannot put a price on those joys. But the other joys I've had from just being there with my children. So how how do you juggle then being with your children and being freelance? And I mean, with all the political stuff that's going on at the minute, you mustn't get a moment to yourself. Oh, you just make it up. You can just say it doesn't matter what you write. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be true. You just, just we're going to hell in the handcart. Everybody knows we're going to hell in the handcart. You just have to, you know, segue. A lot of it is it, 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 it's because of experiences, because, you know, people will say, what do you think is likely to happen? You know, you ask a 20 year old, what do you think is likely to happen? They will sit, they'll have to research it and think yes, about it. Yes. You ask me what's likely to happen. I was in the grounds of Stormont in 1972 yes. when the last parliament set. My goodness. I, I, I remember the, the, I was doing my A-levels when 40,000 UDA men were parading around mm -hmm. Belfast at the time of the workers' strike. I was yeah. outside Belfast City Hall at the, the Good Friday, or the Belfast uh, Anglo-Irish Agreement mm -hmm. and so on. I, I was in the very fringes of the talks process and things like that. So I can very quickly, it, it, it's easy enough to do. You know, to turn out if for I say for for most for people who don't write, be like somebody. I mean, I'm not a doctor or a vet. You know, so bringing a you know a rabbit with a floppy ear, yes. a vet will go, oh, it's got such and <laughs> yes, such a disease, yeah. and I I would have been worrying about it for two weeks. Yes. And with me, it's it's because of what I do, and I'm lucky. It's the only. It's I'm not even sure it's a gift, but the one thing I I, I can do or seem to be able to do reasonably well is churn out a few hundred words. Yes. Which uh, which people doesn't matter what their background is. See, and I work for a range of, I mean, I have columns in the Irish News newsletter. I'll, I'm mega because I have a chip on both shoulders. <laughs> you know, I, I, work, I work for a range of other newspapers and magazines. Mm -hmm. I do RTE, UTV, BBC. You know, and I, I presume it's, and a lot of the evening work would be the things like The View and The View from Stone. Yes, yeah. They go out at 10, you know, yes. I've recorded late. Other stuff like Nolan, mm -hmm. you know, and I think Steve was too, I've done Nolan from the bathroom more than one occasion. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. know, because you can just, and so you can fit it in yeah. that way. And, and, and it's, it's, it, it is about making time. It's also about, I mean, it doesn't matter if you're a young dad coming home. Mm -hmm. You have to make time. And I, I think that's one of the biggest. And I mean, I, I've looked at stuff about divorce and separations and mm -hmm. difficulties in marriage. And, yeah. and one of it, it's not just the children themselves. It's suddenly parents realize, you know, that 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 weekend where they might have been play football and go with the mates for a few drinks. Mm -hmm. You know, so you leave the house at 11, you come back at midnight yeah. tanked. Yeah. You can't do that anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, there are a lot of things. And you shouldn't say you have to give up for your children. But in essence, you have to change your whole life changes to to adapt to the yeah. circumstances of those children. Yeah. I think you have to choose, don't you? Well, I say I made the choice and I, and yeah. it, I, I made the choice because I haven't said I, I, I never thought I really wanted to be a dad. But when I met the person that I became the, my, everything, you know, I'm, I'm not an emotional, you know, you know, sensitive type person, but yeah. I just knew this was the, the person I wanted to spend the rest of my life with and yeah. would like to have children with. Mm -hmm. And um, and we knew the we knew what was going to happen. And um, it, it wouldn't have mattered even if I hadn't I hadn't been able to leave the job. I would mm -hmm. have still. It would have meant giving up other things. Yes. But I would have found. And I think that people will say, "What advice do you give to any dad? If you're going to be any sort of parent, it's if you're not prepared, mm -hmm. if you cannot conceive of circumstances in which after those first few weeks, oh, could oh, what did lovely little puppy would be." <laughs> Once you get past that, yeah. once, once you start to realise you're waking up at three o'clock in the morning yes. to another pile of poop having mm -hmm. to be dealt with, yes. if you can't, if you're not ready to cope with that, mm -hmm. don't rush into it. Don't yeah. think I must have children immediately. You know, and so um, it's, it, it, it's odd advice to give, but it, when you look at the, the number of relationships that break down because mm -hmm. of that um, inability of almost begrudging your children time, if you're begrudging your children time, there's something wrong in the system. Yeah. In in terms of, you know, um, fathers as role models, do you think there are enough um, role models? For example, you talked about um, you taking your daughter to the school gate and you're just what, you know, just a couple of dads that you see there. Um, do we see enough role models in the media for fathers? Um, oddly enough, and in a very localised <laughs> sense in Northern Ireland, I, I like to think sometimes uh, of myself as a role model. And I do get people coming up to me and saying, you know, I, I, I love your stuff about your children and your background, and your family and so on. And I've had a, a, a girl I met, I think she was about 17, 18 in Easton's in Belfast. She told me about two years ago. I just said, I wish my dad had been like you. You know, he says, oh, he's, a lovely, lovely. he's a lovely man, my mum and his upper. But, you know, just the fact I... I, I missed him because he was never there. He was always away and we never got the the chance to bond properly. And then when he and my mum divorced, he moved. So I said, I just, as I read your stuff, I said, she was only about 18 at that mm -hmm. time. I said, I just love the fact when you say, 
you know, that what you do with your kids and these, these you know, they, I posted a picture of us trampolining. Uh-huh. And it's a, the number of people, it must have been reasonably young, saying, I wish I could get my dad or even my mum to come on a trampoline with us. So it, it, it's, and I'm, I'm always wary of role models mm-hmm. because we live in a world where there's almost a tendency to try and tear them down. Now, anyone who's set up as a role model is, oh, well, you do realise he drinks, so you do realise. I'm not saying I do, by the way, yes. <laughs> just in case someone's yeah. there, exposing <laughs> a secret. No, I'm not. I'm just saying there's this tendency to assume that everyone has feet of clay. So get a hammer and start, you know, you know, knocking the feet. Um, I think the only role model a dad needs is it, it's that or any parent. And it could be grandparent as well. Anyone yeah. who's part of the family circle mm-hmm. is to be there for your children. Because one thing I do know, and it's having, having lived in an orphanage, I've been taking a long time to get that security. I used to think it was just, um, I remember writing a piece about four years ago about saying how long it took me to find that confidence and security mm-hmm. and absolute certainty about things. The number of people that contacted me afterwards and say, that's not just offerings, Alex. Yeah. I mean, uh, that's uh, somebody children. said to me, other time, look, I had a perfectly good upbringing, you know, no offering, no anything, perfectly good, nice middle class home professional parents, barely knew them because they were always, as one other person said to me, I said, loved your piece, Alex. I spent most of my life with my nanny. Mm-hmm. And I just thought, you know, and that's this. Yeah. We have this notion that somehow you, it, it's okay. It's almost like buying them things. That, well, here's, and the nanny might be wonderful, you know, and all the yeah. other support mechanisms, sending them to after school clubs, all the other things you can do with children at weekends or after school because mm-hmm. you're doing other things. Right. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of children in later life when you talk to people, they will and ask them about their parents. Mm-hmm. I mean, they, it's so almost heartbreaking. The number of them say, I didn't really know my dad. I didn't really know my mom. And the number of people have said to me over the years, I wish I'd had the chance Mm -hmm. to ask my dad. And I always say to people, again, when they ask for advice, I say, don't leave it, you know, have the conversations with your children. Don't have them wondering at the funeral, but just talk to them all the time. And I said, Mm -hmm. leave them things. I remember writing a piece quite recently and said, don't worry about leaving them a house or money. That'll sort of, all those things sort of, leave them something about yourself. Even if it's just a a letter. When Indy was born, for example, I wrote a letter. I'd written a piece Uh about Lila when she had been born as Mm -hmm. well, because she had been the one after the miscarriage. Mm -hmm. And do you know something? I just know that when the time comes and when they, those will be the things they remember. doesn't matter. Yeah. I don't know what will leave them in, 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 in financial or, mm-hmm. you know, uh, gift terms or anything like that. But I do like to think that is the one yeah. thing she'll treasure more than anything. Because and I talked to her about me. I talked to Meg and I, you need to talk to your children about who you are, what you are, why you had them, what you do, what you think. Because again, yeah. so many children know I, absolutely yeah. nothing about their parents. I, I, I fully support what you say because my dad, I, I have to admit, I didn't really know him, even though... He was my dad for for so long. Mm-hmm. And I think that is so important about sitting down and, and talking and sharing w- with your children. Um, how has your past influenced how you parent, Alex? I think it, well, I think it does go back to this thing of knowing what I knew I was missing, you okay. know, and, and it's, it's like saying when I met Kerry, it's only when you realize you, you meet the person, you just it changes your life. You realize how lonely you were. Yes. And it's only after you've been adopted and you think this is what it's like. This is what life is meant to be. I'm mm-hmm. meant to have space, which is mine. And, you know, a bear, which is mine. Yes. And uh, uh, adults, parents, mom, dad, whatever. It took me a while to get to the mom, dad stage of them. But all of that. And so in my parenting, it, it, it's not particularly sophisticated. You know, it, it, it's not um, one of these, you know, some parents almost, I think, sort of like a root map set out for the children. Mm-hmm. They'll be doing this, then they'll go to work, then they'll be university, yes. and then, the, then they'll be working there, and then they'll be married, and then, oh, yes, we can afford, yes, if they have their grandchildren, then we can, you know. <laughs> I've never had a root map for the kids. I just yeah. think, you know, all that matters because you don't know in life you do not know I know a 20 year old could walk. people used to make this joke about to say about Alex you have the much older dad thing yes. I could look I could have had a child 21 walk across the road and uh, and be knocked down in an accident which mm. happened to someone very close to me yeah. had twins and three My weeks goodness. later they were killed in a car accident yeah. and it's just one of those really mm-hmm. bizarre things you know so, and, yeah. and that's, it's quite reassuring the number of people who said to me about the old dad thing to say go for it mm-hmm. you're happy you look happy you're happier than I've known you in 40 years your children mm-hmm. appear to be loved and you know again it sounds cliched but it's you cannot nothing nothing yeah. nothing replaces um the, the time you give them and the sense they know mm-hmm. that they're loved. And I like to think with Megan, as I was now 21, and Lila, I, I, I'd like to think, and indeed I, I, I think I can stand on fairly safe ground, 
if anything happened to them, no matter mm-hmm. how bad it was. Mm-hmm. And even though they knew that Carrie and I might have difficulty with it, they would come and tell us. Yeah. They wouldn't hide because they know that they might go, oh, for God, that was... But <laughs> the arms would be there. They would yes. be loved. They would be sheltered. They would be brought in. They yeah. would help. And again, you talk to so many um, children as they get older, it's not, oh, it's almost like a fear mm-hmm. of the parents. It's a fear of disappointing Mm -hmm. I don't want my children ever to be worried about disappointing me because they walk, they talk, they smile, they hug me. You know, they share my my love for absolutely appallingly crap jokes. Yes. All of that is part (laughs) of that, of what we are. Yes. Nothing, everything else, if if they happen to be geniuses or first class honours or whatever it is, that is all bonuses. And that's for them. That is their life. But what I have with them, it's, it's the emotional. Yes. It's that. No matter what happens. And, you know, I keep saying that uh, they need to know, uh, you know we're there for them. It's important to me. And it, mm-hmm. it's from the adoption thing as well. They're there for me. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they can tell. It's like children are like dogs sometimes. And if, yeah. if in a well, in a well regulated loving house you know, yeah. where that dog will just come up and put its head on your knee, it just knows. Yes. Children in well regulated houses like that will know yeah. when the dad or the mom are unhappy and that ability to just come up and go. Are you okay? Mm-hmm. People forget just how it's simple, but it's it's so important that kids yeah. aren't afraid to come up and, you know, I just know they should know you well enough to know yeah. that. And you just go. So, and sometimes you do you just give them a hug and go, yeah, it's been a tough day. Mm-hmm. It's been difficult, but yeah, I'm OK. Yeah. Let's go and watch Lauren Hardy or something. <laughs> All of that. That to yeah. me is what it's about. Everything else. Everything else is not a distraction, but it's not important. They will leave their own yeah. lives at some point. Mm-hmm. But up, until that point when they leave to go and live their own lives or I'm out of their lives because I've died, it's 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 them. It's me yeah. and them. That's the only process yeah. that really matters to me. I mean, I can feel how passionate you are about this and about spending time w- with your children. Um, for new fathers and stuff, um, there doesn't seem to be enough information out there about just the simple things that you were saying about spending time with them Um you know, making the choice to, to spend time with them and to provide them with love and security. Um, what, what can we do as a society to ensure that new fathers um, have that information? It's not just new fathers. It's almost like a, a we need men's clubs. The other thing okay. is, you know, woman gets pregnant, you know, uh, there are all sorts of backup things. You know, she'll, mm-hmm. she'll, she gets the scans. I have to say something that's, that's a little bugbear with me. OK. It's quite often I, I went to, I think, just about every scan. Mm-hmm. And every, every through every pregnancy and so on, but the number of times I remember saying this to Carrie, the number of times I felt like I was a distraction okay. to them. The sense of um, oh, is is the, will the dad be, is the dad coming in, uh, or do you want? Will you be at the next one? Do you want to be at the next one? And you'd be going, well, what's uh, oh, all right. Well, we've told the mum that, okay. and you just want to go, yeah. I, we're here together mm-hmm. you know that there's the clue we're here together and every time you see us we'll be together you mm-hmm. know and what well, the consultant you know, we even used to say who knew what I did uh-huh. so is there anything that could happen in the politics that would make you <laughs> stay there <while laughs> I, I said no because yeah. my phone if I need somebody will tell yes. me you know I think sometimes it's important that they and I, I, I don't want to sound like this is critical but I think it's important that those who are there for the mum right from the beginning also realize that many dads do feel like they're left yeah. out. And I remember mm-hmm. talking to one one guy who said to me, and it, it's again, as a piece I'd written, he said, I like he said, is that just because they knew who you were, Alex? Because a couple of times I was up, I was made to feel like, what was I doing there? I was made mm-hmm. to feel like, well, you don't need to sign anything. Oh, this is the mum just does this. Mm-hmm. Um, I think sometimes you need to bear that the father has a role to play. And also, I think, generally, I don't know how we do it, but we have to find a... Uh, uh, discover some magic formula in Mm -hmm. which being a dad being a hands-on dad being a an emotional dad being a gushy dad Mm -hmm. you know is is perfectly acceptable that you know it's okay to cry when you're with your kids when you do them something that they see them coming down the slide for the first time Mm -hmm. it's okay to go oh my god (laughs) you know this is wonderful i suppose (coughs) yeah yeah, well it's good yeah yeah Yeah. go and hire one you know yes little things like that And, and it's a sense of the guys almost always have to be macho yes and tough yeah and that even sometimes you know when the kids get a bit older you know you don't want to hold their hands go, oh no you're big enough uh, and i i also think it's it's with boys there's this thing that sometimes dads need to be 
dads are different. This thing with boys and girls, it's yes. almost like I have both, so I, I just treat them the same. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think there's, I sometimes see dads with the, t- treating the boys entirely differently from the girls. Um, I, I, I don't know how we get it. It's in the same way that women have had the fight, and I'm very supportive of it, to break the glass ceilings, to yeah. be taken seriously, to, to say, look, you know, why can't a woman do that job? I also have to think we, we need a world in which women learn to recognize and again mm-hmm. not critical of all women yeah. but women learn to recognize that a man is capable yes. of doing all these things and it's mm-hmm. okay for the woman to go look i'm going to relax a while can you mm-hmm. take him up or take her up yeah you know and settle them yeah. can you get up and do this and so on mm-hmm. because it is you know it's never have the situation where you're playing the child one off because children when they get the four or five, they recognize that quickly. They need, they know who to play off yes. yeah. each other. But I just think we, I just worry sometimes that it, it, it's, it's a world in which dads, not always by choice, mm-hmm. but almost by a process of osmosis, somehow it's, well, you don't do the following things. Mm-hmm. For me, I do everything, absolutely everything <laughs> with the kids. And the fact is with Megan and with Lila, uh, and even with Indy, who's now two and running around the place, mm-hmm. You're never quite sure which of them, which of us they would have come to, yeah. but they would come equally. You know, sometimes mm-hmm. it was the one closest. Mm-hmm. You know, and you know, again, you hear dads just say, "Oh well, uh, my wife doesn't actually allow me to change the nappies. Mm-hmm. You know, she doesn't like me doing that, or she wouldn't want me taking them to school." Yeah. And so, because again, sometimes this, as I said right at the beginning, sometimes yeah. it's almost like criticism of the mother. Well, where's the mum? Yeah. Is she not here? Is she ill? And again, that's nonsense. Parenting is. It's two people, yes. You know, and I just think we we need to learn to accept that it is a it's a two people process. Yeah. So, do you think there's a secret to being a good dad, then, Alex? Um, I don't know. Just um, just being there. I don't know if that's a secret. You know, it, again, it goes back to the the because I know I and I I would not wish every dad to go through this experience. <laughs> every mother go to an orphanage for two years yeah, well, and then yeah. fail. You know. <laughs> suddenly realize what it's like to be have no one in your life no one there to protect you and look after you Mm -hmm. but when you've been through that process i know instinctively and oddly a thing is it's the same with my my nephews and nieces i have a great relationship with them because sometimes you just know Mm -hmm. that it's it's not a toy they're looking for it's not you know a, a tenor handed over it's sometimes that it's it's almost it's like the shoulder it's the hand it's the come on over here tell me what's going on yeah it's that it's that sense of trust, that sense of knowing there's someone here that no matter, even if they're a bit uncomfortable with their parents, you're part of the wider family circle and yeah. they can trust you. And it, at, at, the, at the heart of it all, like all processes, it's, and it goes to politics as well, mm-hmm. enough. you have to learn. They have to know. These children know nothing. Every, you, are, you are what they, they, you are their experience of human beings, of adults and so on. Mm-hmm. You get it wrong. You ruin children. You can't yeah. help it. you ruin their life because they, if, if you're cynical and offhand and, and so on, and the number of people you talk to, authors, artists, you know, people who are celebrities and interviews, yeah. because the, the number of them will say to you, I had a really difficult relationship yeah. with my dad. And I still find that, you know, in, mm-hmm. in, in terms of other things. And so many actors say, I, 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 and almost I became myself when I was allowed to act, mm-hmm. you know, and I, I just think I, that's a very complicated answer, it a very is. complex answer it to is. It's just, maybe it's just be there. No, kids know. The one thing about kids, they are brilliant from an early age of knowing is when you're doing, but I'm sorry to use the word, when you're bullshitting them. They mm-hmm. know that. Children know that instinctively. So don't. Yeah. You know, be level with them on, on exchange that they level with you. And I always say to the kids, just tell me. It doesn't matter what it is. Just tell. Yes, I might laugh at you, but just, <laughs> but just tell me. And yeah. I think that's, it, it's that complete and utter trust it's like when a child like indy climbs up on the sofa and you stand there going, oh my, what is he doing mm-hmm. and he falls he comes down deliberately and he comes down deliberately because he knows you're going to catch him because yeah. experience has taught him mm-hmm. that if he falls he will land in two arms so mm-hmm. again if you said the secret is doesn't matter what age they are doesn't matter whether they're two months or whether they're 30 if they're falling and you're alive they need to know you will be there That is fantastic. Listen, thank you so much for your time, Alex. It's It's been really insightful. And I just love how passionate and stuff you are and some of the the take home ideas about, you know, being there, spending time with your children, providing them with love, security. It's just fantastic. So thank you. Not been, you know, because I know some some people can't because they need to work and the mortgages to pay and so on. But I simply say that weekends, evenings and things Mm -hmm. like that. Kids love being read too. 
And I know some parents are uncomfortable with reading it because they were never read to. Mm-hmm. And doing the, I do the voices. I do everything, <laughs> which I love because quite often I'm on a second book and Lila will go, that's the voice you do for Mr. Thompson out, <laughs> <laughs> out of that book. And you know, well, this is his cousin who in a different book. But, you know, Sounds the like same. That. So again, it's all that. You know, all you want is that your kids as well. They, you just want them to have happy memories of you. Mm-hmm. Not that you just did this, that, and drove them somewhere or gave them a tenner when they needed it, but actually just went, my dad was fun. I mm-hmm. enjoyed the company. I like that's all you can do. Thank you so much, Alex, for your A pleasure. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening and watching another Parent Line podcast. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and we'll see you again soon. Bye.